Is there fraud really happening in POTA, and what can we do about it? What do I use to record audio for my ham radio videos? And what length of coax is best for portable ham radio operations this time on Mailbag Monday? What's happening, everyone? My name is Mike, K8MRD. If you have an amateur radio-related question for me, shoot me an email, K8MRD at iCloud.com, and you just may have one of your questions featured on an episode of Mailbag Monday. Guys, we've got three great topics today, so let's dive right in. This first one kind of makes me a little sick. This viewer says, how do you feel about POTA fraud, and is there any way to report it, or should anyone even bother? I've had several park activators include me in their logs when we actually didn't make contact. Some include me in their logs when they barely had enough contacts to get credit for the activation, and others include me in their logs just to bump up their log totals. I guess for those sad activators, it made them feel good, but for me, it makes me feel dirty for my hunter log having fraudulent entries that I have no control over. See, Satan doesn't even want to hear about this. And are there any channels for reporting such fraud, or should I just ignore those sad activators? Well, I didn't even know about this until you emailed me, and it makes me sick. So if you're an activator and you're doing this, how sad of a person are you that you need to falsify your POTA log just to get an activation? Like, so what? You only made eight or nine contacts. You didn't successfully activate the park. Well, guess what? You still went out and had fun and those eight or nine people that you contacted still get credit for it. Why are you falsifying a log? That's just, oh my God. Sorry, I just, <laughs> I gotta take a minute. <laughs> just despicable. So, Parks on the Air is very much self governed. There's really no way to officially police it other than checking your logs with the uh, POTA logs, I guess, and seeing are there any fraudulent cases in there. Uh, but fortunately, the Parks on the Air team is fantastic. And would you believe? On their website, they have a place just for this. Let's take a look. So if we go to parksontheair.com, okay? Click over here on volunteers. Then we're gonna go to the quality assurance team and look at this. We've got all these email addresses. Notice it says, helping with the upload of logs, the quality assurance team for all countries based on your call sign and not location. So I'm K8MRD, but I'm in Texas in Five Land. Based on your call sign, not location, anything I would have to address with the POTA team, I would send to K8 at Parks on the Air. If your call sign is a K5 call sign or whatever, just a five in the call sign, you would send it to K5 at Parks on the Air. And I would report this, this, this hyenas act of fraudulent, Poda contacts just makes me sick. Satan, are you hearing this? I know it's a bunch of crap. So yes, I would report them. Uh, maybe show your log or show the lack of your <laughs> your being in their log and and report uh, these offenders. Uh, that's just sad. I mean, who knows? They could. There's nothing from stopping you from sitting at home and calling CQ Poda and and not actually being in a park. And, and honestly, nobody would know other than that person that's like if if uh you know your buddy goes on a fishing trip and comes home and it's like man i just caught a 30 uh or a 300 pound tuna whatever there's no pictures for it okay well where's you know i caught it all. i'm just catch and release and i'm a catch and release fisherman that's fine i know i caught it he knows i caught it but i would at least take some pictures have some evidence but yeah if, if they're not in your log and and like you know that this is like a repeated behavior um i mean sometimes i'll get some really weak con contacts and if I get their call sign, I'll, I'll just throw them in the log, you know, uh, but never have I just falsified. That's Ugh, no. So, yes, report these guys. And thanks for writing in, I think. Thanks for making everyone sick to their stomach. <laughs> Next, we've got a question about audio. This viewer writes, thanks for the YouTube videos. I was wondering what type of wireless microphone you use for recording your videos and connecting to the recording device. Not sure if you're using a GoPro uh, digital camera or an iPad or iPhone. So that is a great question. Thanks for writing in. There's a lot of people making ham radio videos right now, and, and this is really for you. Um, when I first started off, I was just using an iPhone, 
And guess what? I still am. I use either an iPhone 8 Pro Max, whatever, or uh, an iPhone 14 Pro Max thingy. Those are those are what I use for cameras. Audio is arguably more important than the quality of your video. I shoot everything in 1080, 60 frames per second. I just like that flame fl uh, frame rate. It's it's nice and smooth, and I don't have to deal with big 4K files. For audio, I've gone through a lot of different uh, wireless microphones over the years from cheap Chinese things. Uh, for maybe three or four years, I was using Rode wireless mics. I had a lot of problems with those Rode wireless mics, whether it be um, not really dropouts, but just poor audio quality or the Rode microphones, especially the because I always use a lavalier, an external lavalier microphone that I'll plug into the transmitter. The Rode lavaliers sound great, but they suck in terms of construction. They would the wire would always break right where the uh, wire went into the connector. And, and uh, Rode's customer service is great. They've sent me a new one, and I just rewired the other one. Just soldered some wire together because they didn't know I was a ham and I could do that. But I've gotten rid of Rode, and now I am using the DJI wireless mic, which actually is just that. And I'm really happy with this. I think I think uh, pretty much all of us, myself, uh, Jason at Ham Radio 2.0, Josh, KI6NAZ at Ham Radio Crash Course, um, Robert from Digital Rancher just got the newer, they, there's, a, there's a version two of this, like pretty much everybody's jumped on the uh, DJI bandwagon. And they're great because this case not only houses the two transmitters and receiver in here, it's also a battery, so it charges them. Here you can see a USB-C port for charging this case that will then in turn charge your uh, microphones and uh, receivers. So this I just have with the uh, little clip on here, but it also has uh, an adapter for the iPhone Lightning and it also has an adapter for USB-C. If you want to just take this off, you can plug this in. And now you can plug this receiver directly into your USB or lightning socket on your phone. Battery life on the transmitters and receivers is fantastic. Six, seven hours easily. The transmitters have a built-in lavalier mic. They also have a little clip if you want to connect it or, or clip it onto your clothing or something. Or they have, which you'll always see in my videos, this little magnet, which... I just put right here on my chest and I use an external lav underneath that. But the audio quality is fantastic on here. You'll notice I had this in a case. I 3D printed this. I just found this on Thingiverse. And this has a little compartment where I store all of my stuff. So the first thing, because I use an iPhone and uh, they just recently updated to the 21st century with USB-C, I've got a lightning to TRS adapter to go from my iPhone to the receiver and then as far as microphones I've, I've I'm not using the Rode microphones anymore this is a cheap microphone that I picked up for maybe 30 or 40 bucks I've got a couple of these this is from a company called power Dewise. So, I mean I don't know sure that's how you say it um, it's got a little micro uh, uh, magnet on here so I can just clip the magnet from the DJI transmitter right to that this goes under my shirt it's got a nice wind muff I like to keep the lav under my shirt uh, if it's windy I'm, I'm always outside so if it's windy just having it underneath my shirt uh, gets rid of some wind noise but you also have um, here's an extra um, magnet these things are stupid expensive and I have lost them like, like two of these are like 13 bucks but you got your dead cats that go on the uh, transmitters and here I don't really use this but this is actually the the clip for the microphone which I just keep in there and then a USB-C cable so I like having the two transmitters especially for doing interviews uh, at ham festivals I can mic up the talent and then have a mic on myself this microphone is actually really hot so I have uh, the transmitter gain you can see uh, minus 10 decibels uh, on the transmitter that I'm using this on and then I have the regular transmitter that I'll just give to someone at minus three if it's if it's uh, windy out these um, dead cats just attach right to the transmitter and they're very effective I mean on a, even on a windy day um, you're not going to hear any uh, wind coming through that unless I mean maybe if you're standing in the, in the middle of a hurricane but you can see it's got 
lights on there for the state of charge for the internal battery of the case. Right now I'm at three, so there's four. If it's 100 percent, you're you're at four. And uh, they're just I've been I've been very happy with the DJI mics. I haven't had any problems with them other than one time on New Year's Day when we were in Galveston. Um, I keep the I use the external mic and this actually pulled out. So I lost a lot of audio. So I had to do some voiceovers. Uh, but now I've simply uh, figured I could just wind some of the wire around the transmitter. And that way, if I pull on this, this isn't going to pull out because these unfortunately don't have any threads. So the uh, three and a half millimeter jack doesn't stay locked in there, which would be a nice feature, but that works for me. And then I just throw this in my pocket and run the mic up my clip. Another bad thing about this power to wise mic, which is really the only bad thing, this cable's like six feet long. So I've had to um, just wrap some of it up and just keep it like that. But yeah, these, these DJI mics are fantastic. I love them. I love how everything just stays in the case here. When you open it up, it turns everything on. It syncs them. When you put them back in, it charges them. And you get, oh gosh, probably at, at least a few charges um, from the case will recharge your batteries. But um, So I've never had any issues with, with battery life or anything. So... That is what I use, and now you know the rest of the story. Guys, if you're making ham radio videos, or if you're making any video that you're actually going to put on YouTube and you want people to actually watch them, spend a little bit of money, get a good microphone system. You will be amazed. So <laughs> there you go. Now you know the answer, and thanks for writing in. Lastly, we have a question about one of my favorite topics right next to antennas about coax. This viewer is writing, I'm wanting to get new coax for my POTA slash Gigaparts Explorer backpack outfitted with an FT891 and a Pactena and fed half wave. I notice you use Messi and Poloni POTA Flex on a spool for your POTA activations. My questions are, would it be better to use a straight 50, 30, or 20 foot length of cable or a 30 foot length from the radio to a choke and then another 20 foot length to the Pactena? I'm thinking this way I could use the 20 foot section from the antenna as a counterpoise instead of connecting multiple wires to the Pactena as radials. Can you please give me some insight as to the direction I should go? Yes. So first of all, if you want to save money, watch this. Did you know that viewers of Ham Radio Tube can save 10% off Messi and Poloni coax either at Gigaparts using code MP10 or at Messi.it using code K8MRD. Also, shipments from Italy over 99 euro will get free shipping to the US and Canada. I'll leave links in the description below. And I also have a link for Gigaparts where you can save 5% on all kinds of stuff, including the awesome Gigaparts Explorer backpack that I use for every one of my POTA activations. So, to answer your question, Let's go with another, it depends. So I most commonly use a single 50 foot run of coax. That's just kind of the length that I gravitated towards uh, on my portable ham radio operating journey. It's just a good number. It's long enough to where if your activating position isn't very close to where you're actually gonna put your feed line, or your, your feed point rather, you can get out there. But the Potaflex is so lost, uh, so efficient rather, your losses are like negligible at 50 feet. So even at like six meters, if you're with the Potaflex seven, you're 0. 0.6 dB of loss. And with the Potaflex six at 50 feet, you're 0. 0.8 dB of loss at 50 megahertz. So that's irrelevant. Now, as far as carrying, transporting your Potaflex, yes, there are options. So this right here is the Pota Speed, and I've got 50 feet of Potaflex 7 on this one. But since I got the Potaflex 7, Stefano has started shipping the Potaflex 6, which I've been using uh, now because, well, I just like it. And he also has this uh, strap here. It doesn't come with this light. But this is called the uh, MP strap. And it's got a little carabiner on here. It's just a Velcro strap. This is the Pota Flex 6. And I just put this on the outside on the Molly of the Gigaparts Explorer bag. And that's how I carry it. And look how fashionable I look. This is amazing. So you're not taking up room inside the bag for coax. This can just hang on the outside of it. But you do have to wind this up manually versus the POTA speed, I mean, you just grab the thing 
and start reeling it in. And in about five seconds, you just wound up all 50 feet of that cable. So those are uh, two nice options there. Now, in terms of the Potaflex 7 and Potaflex 6, I am going to be doing a standalone video for these that go a little bit more in depth. The Potaflex 6 is surprisingly thin compared to the 7. I actually put my calipers on this. The Potaflex 7 was like 7.6 millimeters in all actuality, where the Potaflex 6 is like 6 point, some 6.1 millimeters. So uh, a considerable difference, and it's stupid lightweight. I mean, they're both lightweight, but um, I've, I've been really enjoying this Potaflex 6 lately. So um, yeah, you're going to have to figure that one out on your own, but uh, get both. There you go. So what I do, I keep in my Gigaparts Explorer bag, I've got one of these little bags that I have all of my stuff, my microphone, my Pactena, a whole bag of all kinds of little adapters because you always want adapters out in the field. And one of those items happens to be a choke. Now I use that 50 foot run from the antenna into the choke and then I'll put the choke right at the radio because why not use 50 feet of coax for your counterpoise wire. I have never ever hooked up a radial or counterpoise, whatever you want to call it, to my Pactena and fed half wave. Never, never done it, never needed to. Uh, just let the coax be the, be the poise, throw a choke. I don't even use a choke all the time. Like it just works. Sometimes I do use a 20 foot length of coax and I've also I've actually replaced that because I got this from ABR Industries which you can save 10% off at ABR with code uh, I don't know I'll put it right here whatever the code is I think it's KMRD10 This already has a choke on it pretty close to one of the ends maybe maybe a few feet off of one of the ends so if I'm going really lightweight and portable I'll take that but to me using two lengths a 20 and a 30 to get 50 with a choke in line, this is a choke from Pactena. This is a really good inline choke. But it's like, why would I want two lengths of coax to do one thing? And then you're going to need, like, this one's BNC. So you'd need a BNC adapter for this side and a BNC adapter for that side. Whereas something like this choke has an SO239 right here to a PL259. You just plug your coax into here, plug this into your radio. Bob's your uncle. So... It really depends on your operating style, where you're going. I personally prefer longer lengths when I'm going to just a random park that I've never been to because I don't know where I'm going, where I'm going to set up, and where my antenna is going to be. So really, my answer, if you want a short run, get a 20, 25-foot run, and maybe get a 50-foot run as well. I, I just, for me personally, that works better. I want every single one of you to put in the comments, what length coax do you use specifically for portable operating or lengths if you have a couple. So that way this viewer can read everything that you guys like to do. I've told you what I like and maybe you can extrapolate a decision that way. But yeah, I would just rock a 50 footer, honestly. If you're only gonna get one, get a 50 footer. If you can get two coax lengths, get a 50 and maybe like a 20 or a 25 and uh you should you should be plenty fine for 99 percent of your poda activations so that's my answer thanks for writing in guys if you have amateur radio related questions for me shoot me an email k8mrd at icloud.com i would love to hear from you in the meantime thanks for watching another episode of mailbag monday my name is mike k8mrd 73 for now